Hello Divination and welcome. In today's tutorial, I'm going to show you how to create a background image border designs with Divi. This is the final result we're aiming to achieve. So without wasting a lot of time, let's dive in and let's get started. So let's start by creating a brand new page. So I'm going to come over here to pages, click on add new. So let's just call this designs. However, you can also use these design techniques to any existing page. All you have to do is to add a new section and start designing it. All right, so I'm gonna click here on Use Divi Builder, build from scratch, and we're going to add two columns here. And in the first column, we're going to add a blurb. So I'm gonna select it. Next, we're going to remove this image here. So I'm gonna click on image and icon and just delete it. We're gonna give her a blurb, a background color of white. And then over here on the design tab, let's start working on our title font and our body font. So to make things easier for me, I'm just going to hover over here and this will take me directly to where I need to make those edits. So I'm going to click here on this brush tool and um, over here for our title font, we're going to set this to Oswald, select it. And my body font is going to be Leto. So I'm going to click here on the brush tool again and search for my font. It's called Leto, select it. Next, I'm going to set my margins. So I'm going to come over here to spacing and here I'm going to add 5% margin to the top and also to the bottom. And we might as well add 5% to the left and right as well. Note, notice that I'm uh, clicking here on this chain icon because this applies the same value to both sides. All right, so moving on, we also need to add some padding. So again, this needs to be set to the top and the bottom. So I'm going to come over here and add my 7%. And on the left and right, this time it's going to be 10%. So make sure you're applying this to both sides. All right, so now that we've added our padding, we also need to add some rounded corners. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'm gonna come over here to border and for our rounded corners, we're gonna set this to 20 pixels. And notice here that my chain icon is activated. So the same value here will be applied to all the sides. Right, so moving on, we need also need to add some rounded corners. So as you can see here, my value is applied to all the corners, but the design we need needs only to go to the top right and bottom left. So let's break the chain, set this one here to zero, set this one here to zero. All right, so now we have the shape that we uh, that we need. The next stage now is to add our box shadow. So I'm gonna come over here, click on box shadow, select it. Now I'm gonna add a background image to this column. So to do that, I'm just gonna save here, click on my gear icon, and then click on the gear icon on the columns, click on background, and over here on the third tab, I'm going to click this plus button and add my image. And the image that I'm going to go with is this one here. So I'm going to select it, click upload an image. And now you can see we have our image here in the background. The next stage is to add a background color by coming over here to background. And I'm just going to click on this plus button and paste my color like that. Next, we're gonna come back over here to the image. I know we keep going back and forth, but uh, this is how we need to achieve this design. So I'm gonna click here on normal uh, blending mode, and uh, you can play around with all of these and see which one works better by just trying them out. So you can see here the preview of how it's gonna look like. But for this example, I've gone through most of these anyways, and the one that we're gonna go with is luminosity. There we go. So that's gonna be our style. Now we also need to add some rounded corners here. So we're gonna come over here to design, border, and pretty much we're just gonna follow the style that we have here. So let's break the chain here. In fact, you know what? I'd rather add my values first and then delete them. So I'm gonna add 20, and that's gonna to go to all the sides, but we want to match the style that we have on the inside. So we're gonna break the chain and then set the top one to zero, set the bottom one to zero. So now the rounded corners are matching. Now, the next step is to add a box shadow. So I'm gonna come over here, choose the first one, and pretty much this is our final design. Let's save this and save this one more time. All right, so now it's time to work on our second design. So what we're gonna do here is just duplicate this and drag it over here to the right and use this as our starting point. All right, so what we're gonna do now is we're going to restore some of these settings by coming over here into my module settings, design, and the first thing I am going to reset are the rounded corners. So to do that, we're gonna come over here to border. And then I'm just gonna click on these three little dots and reset border styles. So now you can see the rounded corners on the top and the bottom I have gone. 
All right, so next we're gonna come over here to margins. So let's head over to spacing. So here on the top margin, it's set at 5%. So this needs to be 10% all around. So I'm just gonna amend this. And I'm also gonna do the same here as well. For the padding, it's gonna be 15% top and bottom. And left and right is gonna be fine at 10%. Next, I'm gonna come over here to border, set my border width to one. And I'm also gonna add my border color, set this to white. All right, so the next step now is to come over here to our row settings. And I'm gonna go into my settings of the second column. And in here is where we want to add our background image to that column. So I'm gonna come over here to background, click the third tab and add our image, and the image I'm gonna go with is this one here. So I'm gonna click Upload an Image. Next, we're gonna add a gradient, so I'm gonna come over here, click on the plus button, and add my first color. And by the way, the colors that I'm using throughout this tutorial can be found in the post, which I'll link to in the show notes below. All right, so, so our second color here is gonna have some transparency, so once you click on it, Make sure that you drag the slider down a little bit and paste the values between the brackets, just like that. Now, as you can see here, we also have options to make further customizations. So I want to come over here to my gradient direction and set this at 90%, I mean 90 degrees. And then I'm also going to set my start position and set this to 50%. And end position is going to be zero. Now look at the style that we've just achieved. So I'm just going to come back over here and uh, adjust my gradient one more time. And I'm just going to re-enter my first color. Okay, so that's looking much better now. All right, so moving on. The next stage now is to add a blend mode as we did uh, in the first example. So I'm going to come over here to the image tab all the way down here to image blend. And again, you can play around with all of these and see which one works for you. But in our example here, I'm gonna go with color. And pretty much this is our final design. Right, so for the next design, let's add two columns by coming over here. And to save us time, I'm just gonna copy and drag this over here and use this as our starting point. So let's start by going into the blurb uh, options and clicking here. And for the background color, I'm just gonna add, instead of having it as white, let's add a custom background color like that. And as you can see, because this is a dark background color, we need to make it easier to read. So we need to come over here to design text and we're gonna change this and set this to light. And now you can see it's much easier to read. Now let's head over to spacing and here is where we need to set our margins. So I'm gonna start with my top, bottom and left margin. So this needs to be set to 10 and 10 as well. So the value needs to go all around and our padding also needs to be 10%, both to the top and the bottom. Now let's add our rounded corners. So I'm gonna come over here to border. And this time we're gonna add our rounded corners all around. So I'm gonna activate this chain and add my 20 pixels like that. So now you can see the rounded corners is around the whole thing. And you may also want to go in and reduce the amount of text that you have here, depending on you know your design. So I'm just gonna delete a little bit here. There we go. So pretty much we're done here. Let's go ahead and save. And then I'm gonna come back over here to my row settings, click on our first column. And here is where we need to add our background image. So I'm gonna click here on background. And then I'm gonna choose the image that I'm gonna go with. I'm gonna click on this plus button. And I'm gonna go with this one here. Upload an image. Now we're going to do something different here. So we're gonna use parallax for this one. And we're gonna use true parallax. And we also need to add some rounded corners here. So let's head over here to the design tab, border, and we're also gonna set this to 20. 
we also need to add a box shadow. So we're going to come over here, choose our box shadow. So we're going to save this for now. Save it one more time. Now let's go into the uh, blur settings. And in here, what we're going to do is to add a box shadow. So we're going to click here on design, box shadow. And the option we're going to go with is this one right here. So let's start adding all our settings. So the blur strength needs to be set to zero pixels. Box shadow strength is to be 200. And our shadow color needs to be set to white. And then what we can do here is we could also play around with our transparency and reveal the background image just like that. So I'm just going to go with this value here and pretty much that's our final design all right so let's work on our final design so to save us time again we're going to duplicate this top one here and i'm just going to drag it into position like that so this is going to serve as our starting point all right so now that i have this in place now let's go ahead and customize it so we're going to click here to go into the blurb modules and then we're going to head over to design border so here we're just going to reset our borders and for our box shadow here we're going to set it to none now let's head over to the margins by clicking here on spacing and for the top margin we're going to set this to five percent and left and right is going to be set to zero right so make sure the five percent is set to the top and the bottom here now the padding you can just leave it as it is now that we're done with this we're going to go ahead and save and then we're going to go into the columns. So I'm going to click here on this gear icon and make sure you click the settings of the second column. Click here on background. And here, what we're going to do is to add a gradient. So I'm going to click here on the plus button. Choose my, my left color. I'm going to paste it in here. And as I mentioned before, if you want to use the exact same colors, I will leave a link to the post in the show notes below. So I'm going to add my second color here. Paste it in place. Now, over here, uh, for our gradient direction, I'm going to set this to 90 degrees. Start position needs to be 50. And end position needs to be 0. Now, let's add our image by coming over here to the third tab. Click this plus button. And the image I'm going to go with is this one right here. So, I'm going to go ahead and say and select it. Upload an image. And now, you can see our image has our image has been added and it's creating this border effect right here okay but we're not done yet because we can also add a bit of styling here by coming to the image blend and setting this to luminosity so pretty much this is our final design I'll go ahead and save save this one more time and this is how you can create different type of borders so there you have it. Thank you all for watching. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up and do follow us on our social media platforms. By doing so, you'll be notified every time we release new tutorials. Until next time, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.